So this is the way we see. Um, it can be seen, the, the, the agriculture field. Basically, it's something which is alive, constantly talking. And uh, how to listen? Well, there are many ways to listen, but what is happening now with the digital agriculture, the digital revolution into agriculture, is that we can convert all this information into numbers. Zero and ones is the language of digital. So soil, plants, air, and machines, everything can converge into the cloud, talking the same language and unleashing um, better decision. It is highly critical that several types of information which are present and converted into the digital world, the digital domain, would be, um, would be collected and then would be compared, would be um, aggregated. Because otherwise, as often is happening right now in the implementation of the digital agriculture, is that uh, several applications, several technologies are just focusing on a single part, which may be the operations, the practice of the people, you know, going into the field, doing things, or maybe the Internet of Things in itself, so just sensing, or maybe tractors and machines, drones, or just software, ERP, and other stock management system really to unleash the power of the digital agriculture is combining all this information together. This is really critical. This is really important. What is happening at a single farm, it's, you know, maybe happening uh, is at a larger area where we can combine several farms in connecting them to together, creating sort of virtual farm, and therefore aggregating the value chain. So for instance, an agribusiness, a food processor can really create a connection with the producers to the benefit of all of them. And so we can replicate the same process into data aggregation at, at a higher level. At the end, what we really want, this is a little more complex as a slide, what we really want is to, um, to implement the concept of adaptive management, which is already an established concept in many other domains, such as industry and management, uh, to the agriculture. So basically, these things is IoT gathering data, for instance, then analyzing those data, then taking decision and doing actions, and these actions goes back into the software analytics and through the crops, having an effect. So we move ahead, gather more data, registering the actions effect, we have a recommendation, adaptation, and we follow the cycle. So when this is happening in a good way, we have a virtual cycle of constant improvement. So this is ultimately the scope. So this is answering the question, why IoT into agriculture? Because otherwise there is no sense. I mean, why just to buy some sensors to implement in our field and creating the communication, looking at graphs, you know, we, we may tend to lose the final scope of it. Now we, let's focus on, uh, on the data. So IoT is creating data and uh, we have many kinds of data. So let's put some order here. Let's try to differentiate among the different types of data. And uh, we can look at the data from this point of view, fixed data generator versus moving data generators. By data generators, we, we consider any, anything that 
may say something into the digital agriculture, this data can go to the cloud and can really support to take a decision. So from this point of view, we have a human data that are divided into monitoring and sampling. For instance, uh, people can go into the field and uh, checking out a plant, if the plant is, uh, uh, is having insects or is having a problem, is having uh, like a lack of nutrients, is having a disease, whatever. So uh, people is moving, but is collecting actually data which are there, which are fixed. Or sampling, maybe soil sampling, for instance, the same apply. Versus moving data generators, in this case, the human moves, goes there and do an action, an action which may be irrigating, pruning, harvesting, so it's actually doing something. And we consider the Internet of Things data generated as fixed data generators. So in this case, we have area generator sensors, and these are meter stations. What does it mean? That it means that when you have a meter station, the meter station is in a place, we consider that all the surrounding area to be representative. So we are not going to put 20 metro stations in one kilometer square, for instance, it's probably too much. We consider that area homogeneous and we're going to put one metro station. Versus point met points, uh, points observations, there we put sensors which can, which can be soil humidity, dendrometers, and we are going to explore this area. So the machines, for instance, maybe satellite drones, lens such as tractors, robots, these are into the moving, moving data generation, generators. So this slide will help starting to have uh, an understanding that we are focusing on this area when we are talking about Internet of Things into agriculture. So this is uh, another way to see fixed data generators, zooming in. So we have uh, these applying to three different areas. So at the crop level, at above soil conditions, and the soil conditions, right? So we want to know where the plants are staying. So part of the plant is above, another part of the plant is below. So we want to keep track of what is happening, monitoring all these three. So mainly IoT focuses uh, historically on these two areas. So above soil conditions, we have metal station, air temperature, metal station which includes air temperature, air humidity, pluviometer, sorry there is a mistake, anemometer, leaf wetness, solar radiation. These are the most important often. When you, when you want to buy a metal station, uh, well, this is, the, this is the standard one, right? The soil, the soil is usually uh, soil temperature and soil humidity at different layers. Soil humidity is really the king here. You, if you want to have a basic implementation of Internet of Things in agriculture, you really want to have several soil humidity sensors which ideally are placed at different levels uh, by several i mean at least three per crop um, identifying specific different conditions which one may be more uh, more um, having receiving more sun another maybe in a dark area in another in an intermediate situation uh, soil temperature, it's also interesting in, in certain application. Irrigation uh, values, monitoring, meaning uh, connecting to the valves, it's also interesting when it's available. And salinity it may be also interesting. It's less used, but it may, it may be highly relevant in certain conditions. Uh, there are also here the, the, the example of the equivalent of human um, operation, which we are not to dig in now. Uh, I'd like to spend a few words about the crop uh, IoT sensors. You know, uh, so historically the attention, the major attention was on the above soil conditions, 
and then move to the soil condition. You know, above soil condition, it's really, it has a long history. For instance, we have metro stations that may be uh, 40 years old, you know, probably replaced, but uh, all the weather prediction, weather forecast, weather condition are based on these information plus the satellites. So uh, the, over the time, uh, there's been a more dense, more density into this domain up to now that any farmer, any well medium-sized farmer can really afford having uh, a metro station. And th this is really the basic recommended, you know, because th this will give you, this will give you um, an information about your specific microclimate conditions. So all these data will really be important to take decision. You can run agronomic model on those data. And the, 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 more, the, the, the more the data are talking about your specific crop, the more the model would be precise into providing a recommendation. Now, the, the recently, given the, given the wireless, the RF uh, advancement in technology, it is possible with little, little effort, little problems, and affordable cost to finally have uh, more little sensors that are detached from the metro station that you can put around and finally tracking what is happening on the soil, getting rid of cables. Cables may be, uh, may be used anyway, but you know, it's, uh, it's a little more complicated. What I was saying is that now we can finally start, in, it is happening, to, to monitor directly the plants, which usually are the trees for orchards. And uh, one sensor which we have, have been implemented and implementing over the last years, uh, are dendrometers. Dendrometers are very interesting. They are, they are um, recording uh, in real time the conditions of uh, lympha passing through the, through the plant. So they are very precise. You can see the daily uh, hydric stress. So you can see that um, the plant is going into hydric stress during the day, recovering in the evening and during the night. And so you can have a daily cycle, but as well, you can have a, a seasonal cycle and you can see the growth of the plant day by day. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. It's like, it's like uh, based on these data, you instead of looking at the soil and having an idea about what is the soil content of water, you can really basically ask in the plant, are you thir thirsty? Uh, so it's, uh, it's moving to that level of precision. And I've personally seen uh, other sensors which are on their way, under development. Some of them are already on the market, but on... Uh, as, as uh, prototypes, uh, leaf sensors. Leaf sensors are quite interesting. These are, this is the future. Leaf sensors, uh, they can, they can uh, take samples of uh, micro voltage communication within the plant. And uh, uh, the, they are under development. There are many, many ways to interpret those signals. So again, maybe may represent any kind of stress of the plant. And if you have that in real time, it's really translating uh, the plant's language. It's, it's really exciting. I've seen that in real time. You can, you can put a, a heat source close to the plant that will provide some stress and the plant immediately respond with a different uh, voltage. So provided you can interpret this, this signal, it's it's really it's really like uh, talking with a plant, li listening directly to the plants. So IoT is really is really moving ahead. Now let's focus more on IoT because IoT is not just sensors. You know you have uh, several modules which are critical to have uh, IoT happening into agriculture. Sensors are the part of listening, right? Sensor is basically listening. It's, it's the ears of the, the IoT system. But you know, if you have an ear uh, that is not connected to a body, it's nothing. So how to connect this ear to a body and ultimately to a brain? 
then you need an infrastructure. So over the last 10, 15 years, uh, even more, there's been a tremendous improvement in technology in order to enable affordable ways to, to make it easy, plug and play solution. Uh, basically, I'm referring to RF. RF communication, indeed, sensors are talking with the IoT uh, system through RF communication. Then, so the IoT is basically the telecommunication at local level. It would then move the information to the cloud. And finally, we need, we need a way to, um, to get in touch with this information, to close the loop. So we want this information to reach us. And so the app of the smartphone really helped to, to close this loop. So basically, uh, the example I was making, which is going to be happening in the future, very soon uh, where you're going to have uh, the plants talking to these leaf sensors then uh, you 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 in real time or near real time in a few minutes you're going to see the plants is under stress and uh, you can intervene or or you can close the loop automatically if it's a high risk stress you can open the valves you can have the system open in the valves according to certain conditions now, this is another scheme of, uh, of the IoT system uh, talking about this several modules. It's a little more technical. What do we have here? Here we have the things, the things, the things are connected to sensors or actuators. What are actuators? Uh, actuators is, for instance, a valve opening. So if you want to switch, open something, do something automatically, that's an actuator. So Internet of Things is about listening and doing automatically. So you have sensors that are listening, soil sensors, air sensors, solar radiation sensors, um, dendrometers, and many others. It's just sticking to the agriculture, otherwise the list is much, much longer. Uh, those sensors are normally, uh, in the Internet of Things, are normally connected through RF. So you have a micro radio, which is communicating with a local repeater or, or a local gateway, which is basically a little computer, like the size of a mobile phone and the power consumption of a mobile phone. Sometimes also they are connected to, through cable. Normally the cable ones are the older, and uh, at this point, the gateway has the, has the, um, the challenge, the, the responsibility to take all this information and forward this information to the cloud. Into the cloud, you have, uh, uh, how can I move that? In the cloud, you have uh, the backend. Finally, you have some server which is processing this information, is taking care to aggregating this information to provide an easy view of this information and eventually to doing some automatically calculation which is applying agronomic models and, and supporting uh, to make decision. And uh, so these are the two ways to see when you see business data analytics and user access and control. These are basically the tool through your laptop or your, through, your, uh, through your smartphone which are connected to the cloud basically those are connected to remote server and the remote server so will take care of the communication with the users and the communication with the field how do i go so this is a view this is an example this is an example of view uh, of the basic installation well well no this is a complete installation we may say let's let's think about an orchard an orchard where you have um, plant sensors, in this case, just sticking to dendrometers. You have, uh, you may have uh, soil humidity and temperature basic. You can have automatic valves that are recording what is happening into the pipe, so you will know the flow of water when and how much water is going into your orchard. Then you have a, a meter station which is providing microclimate condition about the air, the sun presence, wind, and so on. So all the relief is gonna happen soon. You can add the pheromonal traps. There are some pheromonal traps which are automatic. Uh, well, I do recommend at this point to stick on the manual. So there are many ways to go and uh, watch uh, what is happening into your pheromonal traps in just uh, 
putting the data into the, your smartphone in order to aggregate all these data. Once all these data are aggregated, there, there is lots of things that you can do. Probably in another webinar, we can discuss about that. Uh, this is a nice way to see, you know, uh, we have uh, this four element historically, um, air, water, sun, and earth. Uh, and how do we connect the sensors to these four basic elements? So you have specific one, which are solar radiation. This is just a trick to memorize, you know. Uh, so solar radiation sticks to the sun, specifically to the sun. Anemometer, just to the movement of the air. Pluviometer, just for the irrigation, uh, sorry, pluviometer irrigation valves to the water moving and soil nutrients and salinity just to the air. Then you have the combination of them. If you have uh, uh, solar radiation plus water leak wetness, actually, which we consider air as well. You have air humidity, air plus water, water plus air, soil humidity, earth plus sun, it's uh, soil temperature. It's just a trick to remember the, the, major, the major values which are more uh, critical into IoT for agriculture. So this is another example of um, implementation. I've been personally working it, uh, just to give you an idea of what is uh, the, in this in this example. You have soil humidity at two different and layer B. Uh, this is up to you. Uh, you have uh, this kind of sensor. You decide the way to. Important. You have you may have very good sensor, but install them not properly, and the data you're gonna gather would be uh, um, it is important to take sampling at different levels uh, in several applications. But you know that maybe two, three level, depending on the plant, depending on the soil condition. This is another. Uh, example in this case we are going to take uh, humidity at the first level humidity so this is an air a special air uh, humidity sensor which is especially designed to resist to 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 water flooding so it is working regardless it's going to be flooded by water and is informing you about the upper layer of of your ground this is an example of a gateway, right? A forest gateway, maybe working as SMS or GPRS. There are others that are working Wi-Fi, but in that case, it's not appropriate for these kind of applications. Uh, solar panel normally is enough to provide energy required for autonomously working. Ideally, an IoT system should provide as little maintenance as possible. This is finally uh, an ongoing uh, test we are doing with our partners, which are called SensorScope in Switzerland, and uh, with um, Agroscope, which is the research institution, federal research institution for agriculture in Switzerland. It's a very interesting solution to closing the loop. You know, we have um, this is in a greenhouse. We have um, sensors, and uh, and uh, these are tomato plants. Now they are grown up. Uh, sensors and uh, irrigation system um, working in parallel. Therefore, the irrigation system would, would go according to a specific pattern that has been decided and that can be remotely updated. But at the same time, the, the, the irrigation system would take into consideration the values provided by the sensor. So, for instance, if you, if you have a rainy day and the pattern will tell you, okay, this is time to wouldn't work. So Is not only greenhouses that in many cases have already this kind of solution, but open fields. 
now I'm I'm closing uh, uh, it with this chart. You know, this chart is like uh, probably a little over optimistic and certainly a little over optimistic in terms of uh, years of deployment. But uh, it would give it probably a couple of years old. It give you uh, it does give you an idea of the expectations of the Internet of Things. Um, adoption right uh, of course this is talking about several different applications by domotic uh, smart city um, industry uh, and security energy management and much much more i believe that agriculture in itself may represent a great opportunity for the Internet of Things. We started to work in Internet of Things in 2003, uh, actively in 2005, and I've been working into many domains, uh, all outdoors. Uh, but decided to focus on agriculture in 2009-10 because, you know, agriculture, it's very, very interesting application for the Internet of Things. And then we decided to move from uh, the hardware and to the specific Internet of Things to the upper level of uh, analytics, uh, uh, which is also very exciting. And maybe we'll discuss that in another, in another webinar. And, um, but anyway, regardless, what this chart is saying, this, despite that it's probably, as I said, over-optimistic on the short term, I believe this is going to happen because, you know, one of the factors that is um, slowing down the adoption is the matter of uh, economy of scale. Because adoption in this case, it's like a self, um, self, um, self-pushing, self-feeding. Uh, once you have more, once you have more devices in field, you have lower prices. The lower is the price because for industrial manufacturing, the lower is the price. Uh, the more is the adoption, and and so goes on and goes on because the need is there. Uh, technology is almost mature. There are factors which are keeping uh, still. Uh, slow the adoptions, uh, lack of uh, standards. Uh, now we have LoRa, which is interesting. Uh, we have others coming out, but there is still a lack of standard. Um, there are all anyway. All the ingredients are there, so it's just a matter of time. It will just explode. There's going to be sometime soon where you can buy sensors real affordable price a few few tens of dollars for each sensor and let's say a basic um iot um station to, with a meter station plus a few number of sensors six to ten may cost you is going to cost you five hundred dollar this is going to happen soon and then new sensor you will buy for as i said uh 20 30 50 dollars and you can have really your field constantly talking to you. But as, as I said in the introduction of this presentation, it is very important that those data, those information will become decision support. So it's not just that Internet of Things, it's just a piece of the puzzle. To have the, the real benefit, you need to have the old puzzle completed. So the old puzzle is made of other data sources gathering and combining with the IoT. And then you need to have a decision support system which is flexible enough to, to receive knowledge out of the community and to convert this knowledge in easy recommendation for everybody. As I said, we are almost there. Smartphone is almost ubiquitous. Uh, apps are easy to develop. Uh, many applications are there. And uh, actually, we are really focusing in creating this uh, blue application level in order to combine all these 
piece of the puzzle to provide a global view to, uh, to the final user. The final user are the farmers. The farmers should make use of these technologies to make their life easier and better, meaning more profits. This is the closure of this presentation. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, hopefully, we'll see uh, each other again in, uh, in the future.